Great to have you here. Good to have you from all around the world. This is Jim Masters. Thank you very much for joining us. We are live worldwide on the Jim Masters Show. It is uh, May 8, 19th, 2020. It's Tuesday. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are around the world. Thanks for all the love and support and the comments that continue to come in. So many people have been saying they're loving these nightly escapades that we have together here on the Jim Masters Show. If you're just joining us for the first time, we have a lot of new viewers every night. It's just growing by leaps and bounds with new viewers who are discovering the show. As you know, we do something different every night. Sometimes we've done food, we've done music, we've done nostalgia, great guests, all kinds of great things on this uh, new entertainment talk series that we're doing here. And we welcome you from wherever you are. We've been getting uh, viewers from all across the United States and Canada, Europe, Asia, Australia. So, and it's all different hours of the day and night too for around the world. So we welcome everybody to the Jim Masters Show. This is something again that I do professionally working at as a host in television and radio and a journalist and an actor and a narrator, voiceover person. And so many people said they wanted me to do this online. So about three weeks ago, this is week number three, we debuted the Jim Masters Show. And I want to say to everybody, thank you so very much for all the love, all the comments, all the support, everybody liking and sharing the links, having watch parties, everybody posting and everybody commenting. We've got a bunch of comments already and I just started speaking. It has been extraordinary and I'm really enjoying this. Again, we've had some downtime. As I mentioned, you know, there's no planes in the air. Some of the TV shoots are on hold that I normally have. So I've been working out of the house, hosting close up radio and other things out of the home studio here. So we built this set and it's the Jim Masters Show nightly, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with great guests. And tonight I have a real dear friend who's joining me. He's internationally acclaimed. He's renowned. He's an incredible musician and guitarist, Pavlo. And I'm sure if you watch PBS, you have seen his very well-received specials. Uh, they are so incredibly engaging and warm and just, he's such a master at his craft. And we are so excited to have him here. I reached out to him and said, hey, Pavlo, I'm doing the Gym Masters show. Now, he and I met uh, way back when I first interviewed him on public television. He was a guest in the studio. We were live and it was absolutely fantastic. And we've stayed friends and in contact ever since. Matter of fact, after one of the PBS airings, we all got together with his bandmates we had dinner, it was a spectacular, and his lovely wife, Sandra, and we had dinner, and it was terrific. So we, you know, a lot of times people I interview, whether it's through PBS or, or other shows I host, we end up becoming friends and staying in touch, and Pavlo is somebody just like that. He's got a big heart, he loves his audience, he have been, been to the concerts, I can tell you, he puts 110% in. He gets there, he works the audience. It's a very free flowing sort of situation and it's something where everybody's just having a, a blast. So he's gonna be joining me in just a minute. I welcome you and of course, as we always do on the Gym Masters show, you have your beverage of choice. This is actually a, a little bourbon tonight. We've had some wine, we've had all kinds of different things recently. A little bourbon for this uh, Tuesday night in May and I cheer you and you and you and you and you from all around the world, we welcome you to the Gym Master Show. Very nice and smooth. And of course, our regulars are here. If you're just joining us for the first time, we had a nostalgic week uh, about two weeks ago and we whipped out all the childhood toys and people were showing me all the toys they had from childhood. And uh, I mentioned that my cousin gave me this uh, authentic George Burns replica doll. And I showed it just really for one night and everybody's like, oh, keep George Burns on the show. So George is here. He's got his cigar. He's got his glasses and he's joining us as well. And he's staying on the show as sort of my Ed McMahon as my sidekick. Right, George? Yeah, Jim. All right. So he's here. And of course, you know, light and levity. We're, we're going through some tough times lately. So we got to smile. We got to have fun. The official authentic hand-painted I Dream of Genie bottle. This thing weighs a ton. Genie's in there. How you doing, Genie? She's not happy because the hair salons have been closed so she can't get her hair done. And because she's been quarantined in the bottle for months, she can't do her hair because she lost her powers. So you hang in there, all right? Yes, master. <laughs> so the cast of characters are here. Everybody has fallen in love with Jeannie and with George. And as you remember, we debuted Silver. This was something that I picked up when I was on a television shoot in Europe about a year ago. Silver, really beautiful 
Canine and Silver's on the show. Everybody looks for Silver. And one other, of course, cast of characters. Again, we have a lot of fun here on the show, as you know. Got to be light. Got to have fun. Got to laugh. Jimmy the Clown is here as well. If you remember, my parents gave this to me uh, when I was a kid, made of porcelain. Cute. And there, if you've got kids watching, perfect for the kids. Little Jimmy waves to you and says hello. So, as always, here on the Gym Master Show, we have a lot of fun, too. Here's our traditional opening. We go a little Hollywood on this show. We pull out all the stops for our viewers. A little lights, camera, and action. Now we have begun. And, of course, as I mentioned in just a moment, a very special friend, the extraordinarily talented Pablo, is going to be here with me on the show. And he is absolutely amazing. He, is, um, he has so many CDs out, and he's so beloved by so many people including myself. And he's just a one cool cat. He's really an incredible guy, really impressive. And uh, you're going to love this interview. He's all set. He's got his guitar ready. It's all tuned. He's uh, He's been excited about coming on and I've been excited about uh, welcoming him to the show as well. Tomorrow night, we have some great guests as well. We have award-winning comedian, Bill Hildebrandt. He will be with us as well. Vegas comedian, travels all around the world. Thursday night, Marade Nesbitt from Celtic Woman and Rocktopia is going to be joining me as well. She's another dear friend that uh, I've met uh, through our conversations and interviews on PBS about 15 years ago, and we always stay in touch. We just worked on a PBS special, Celtic Heart, with Tim Janis, and uh, that was filmed uh, last year and has aired on PBS in December and March, and she's all excited as well about joining us. She will be here on Thursday night, as I mentioned, on Memorial Day, a very special show at 7 p.m. Eastern. Legendary film and television actor Tony Lobianco will be joining us as well for a very special Memorial Day presentation. And on Tuesday, Liz Kiefer. Liz Kiefer is going to be joining us as well. And Liz has been an actress, an award-winning actress for many, many years, and she was on Guiding Light on CBS, the soap opera Guiding Light for 27 years. And she's my special guest coming up Tuesday of next week. So lots of great guests. Right now, of course, we do the birthdays and we wish happy birthday to all of these fantastic folks. If you're having a birthday, folks, I wish you a very happy birthday, you and your loved ones from Gym Masters. All right. Now, some of the folks who are celebrating birthdays, you may recognize this face. David Downs Hartman, born uh, May 19th, 1935. David Hartman, American journalist and media host who began his media career as an actor. He currently anchors and hosts documentary programs on history, the History Network channel, and also for PBS. Uh, David Hartman is best known as the very first host, the very first host of ABC's Good Morning America. And he did that from 1975 to 1987. As an actor, he starred in the 1970s as a young resident, Dr. Paul Hunter, on the series The Bold Ones, The New Doctors, and as a teacher in the series Lucas Tanner. And he also acted in the 1973 TV movie remake of Miracle on 34th Street. Another famous face that's celebrating a terrific birthday is Grace Beverly Jones. That's right, Grace Jones, Jamaican model, singer, songwriter, born May 19th, 1952, record producer and actress. In 1999, Jones ranked 82nd on VH1's 100 Greatest Women of Rock and Roll. And in 2008, she was honored with a Q Idol Award. Jones influenced the cross-dressing movement of the 1980s and has been an inspiration of artists, including Annie Lennox and Lady Gaga, Rihanna, Solange Lord, and so many others, Brazilian Girls, Nile Rodgers, Santa Gold, and Basement Jacks. In 2016, Billboard magazine ranked her as the 40th greatest dance club artist of all time. Want to let you know, too, as well, another fantastic person. You may recognize this face. This is Pete Townsend. He is also celebrating a birthday as well. And, of course, he is a legendary guitarist and performer and um, just somebody that is so beloved as well. And it is Pete's birthday, and we wish him a fantastic birthday as well. And here's another face, James Charles Jim Lehrer, born May 19th, 1934. He did pass away this year uh, on January 23rd. 
He was, of course, an American journalist and novelist, screenwriter and playwright. Jim Lehrer was the executive editor and news anchor for the PBS NewsHour and PBS, known for his role as a debate moderator during U.S. presidential election campaigns. And he authored numerous fiction and nonfiction books that drew upon his experience as a newsman, along with his interests in history and politics. Now, here's somebody else that you may or may not recognize. You might. He's a big one. Andre the Giant. That's right. Andre Rene Rosmov. January 27th, 1993, unfortunately, is when he did pass. He was born May 19th, 1946. Known as Andre the Giant, he was a French professional wrestler and actor. He stood over seven feet tall, which was a result of of gigantism caused by excess growth hormones. It also led to his being called the eighth wonder of the world. He found success as a fan favorite through the 1970s and early 1980s, appearing as an attraction for various professional wrestling promotions. During the 1980s wrestling boom, he was paired with the villainous manager, Bobby Heenan, and was feuding with Hulk Hogan and the World Wrestling Federation, WWF, that's now WWE. The two headlined WrestleMania, uh, three in 1987, and he defeated Hogan to win the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Here is another legend in the music business as well, who is also celebrating a birthday today, Thomas Wright Scott, better known as Tom Scott. Born May 19th, 1948, an American saxophonist, composer, and arranger. He was a member of the Blues Brothers and led the jazz fusion group LA Express. Tom Scott was born in Los Angeles, California in 1948. He's the son of film and television composer Nathan Scott, who had more than 850 television credits and more than 100 film credits as a composer, orchestrator, and conductor, including theme songs for the TV shows Dragnet and Lassie. His professional career, Tom's, uh, began as a teenager as leader of the jazz ensemble, uh, ensemble Neoteric Trio. After that, he worked as a session musician and he wrote the theme songs for the television shows Starsky and Hutch, The Streets of San Francisco, and he played the soprano saxophone on the number one hit single Listen to What the Man Said by the band Wings with Paul McCartney. In 1976, he played the theme I Still Can't Sleep in Taxi Driver, and in 1982, he collaborated with Johnny Mathis on Without Us, the theme to the 1980s sitcom Family Ties on NBC. He also played the Lyricon, an electronic wind instrument on Michael Jackson's Billy Jean. Some incredible people having birthdays today. We celebrate them all. And if you're having a birthday, we celebrate you as well. And again, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of our show today and every day. We're here 7 p.m. Eastern live with amazing guests, great conversation, fun segments, and a whole host of things. So it is my pleasure right now to welcome somebody who is absolutely as amazing. And again, as I've mentioned, his name is Pavlo. He was uh, from Greece originally. He's lived in Canada. He makes his home in Florida. He loves his uh, wonderful culture, his heritage, but he is a multi-instrumentalist in terms of the ability to take songs and weave them into incredible works of art. He is somebody that just really cares about people, cares about music, and cares about connecting the musical world and his talents to folks who just love music, Mediterranean music, and so much more. Again, he's had some really fantastic specials on uh, PBS, and he's actually going to be filming one, which was supposed to be happening in June in Santorini, Greece, another special for public television. And uh, that's going to be in August. So we're going to hear about that. We're going to talk about that as well. But before we have him on, I just want to show you a little clip. <laughs> When you get together with my friend Pavlo, not only are you treated to a wonderful time and, you know, a guy with a real spirit and a big heart and terrific, terrific music, but sometimes if you're with him in a live studio on television, you are treated to things like this. All right, Pablo, we just saw you step down from the stage and dance in the aisles with members of the audience. Yeah. Any chance, and I think so, again, because I was at your last concert, yeah. and you really do 
work with the audience, get in those aisles and you have a yeah. great time. Is it spontaneous? Is there a set list? What's it no, going to be? I mean, I never have a set list, you know, and all my shows are being, you know, spontaneous is how I love. I mean, yeah. Speaking of spontaneity, uh, uh -oh. here we go. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> We did that actually multiple times live on public television on PBS, and he really is a hoot. And I tell you, very successful nights when he is uh, at the stations, uh, visiting the various stations across the country. Let me tell you a little bit about him before I welcome him on. Now, again, that was an actual live segment of uh, my uh, interviewing him on PBS. And uh, those dishes, uh, yeah, they were for the board meeting, I guess, the ni next night. So as Pablo said, they did have to eat on paper plates the next night. For being all instrumental, mental, uh, Pablo's Mediterranean music really does speak for itself. Over the span of his 20 year career, Pablo, who is of course internationally beloved, renowned, an award-winning recording artist, performer, and songwriter, he's released 15 albums, including four PBS TV concert specials. Born in Toronto to Greek parents, Pablo has made a name for himself by offering a musical, wonderful, you know, when you really think about it, it is something that is is even hard to put in words because it is so beautiful what he does. He simply calls it Mediterranean music, a blend of Greek, flamingo, Latin, even Balkan flavors wrapped in contemporary pop. His music has taken him all around the world. And along the way, he's performed for royalty, the likes of Prince Charles, and he worked and toured with uh, artists such as Jose Feliciano, John Sicarda, as well as uh, Olivia Newton-John, and the tenors, too. It has never been more convincing. Pablo is a true world artist and has become famous for bringing every audience to their feet. Pablo is currently producing his fourth PBS special, Live in Santorini, and is still uh, driven by his father's famous words, have the courage to do what you love and the drive to do it well, some of the incredible music, 15 albums, three DVDs, Pablo in 1998, Fantasia 2000, I Feel Love Again 2002, Frostbite Music for the Holidays 2003, Mediterranean Lounge 2004, Irresistible in 2005, Live at Massey Hall 2007, Live Mediterranean Nights CD and DVD 2008, Trifecta, Pablo, Rick Emmett, Oscar Lopez, Collaboration 2009, Six String Boulevard 2011, and on and on and on. Live in Castoria, that was recently the PBS special. Live in Guadalajara, that was another one. That was 2009 CD, DVD. The Ultimate Collection, together. Let me give you a little taste of the extraordinary Pablo in action, and then we will bring him here as my guest live on the Gym Masters show.
I tell you, he's absolutely amazing. We are talking. I tell you, that is so addictive. Were you rocking in your chair? Were you jumping up around in your living room dancing? Because I tell you, he is somebody that will get you on your feet, get you dancing. And here he is, my dear friend, Pablo. Wow, Pablo. I tell you, we can't get enough of your music. Thanks for joining me on the show. I saw you, you were wiggling back and forth, and so was I. <laughs> it's really nice to be here, Jim. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it is my pleasure. My pleasure. I tell you, you really do get people on the field. I've been at the concerts. We've been at the studio. And how'd you like the clip from PBS of the dishes flying oh, through the uh, studio? Oh, uh. <laughs> you know, as you know, for me, it's about enjoying every moment, every second of my life. So um, we're having fun. We're having yeah. fun. <laughs> so, so now there we saw you on stage with your bandmates and I've met all of them and they're phenomenal. You guys work so well together. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of talent on the stage, but that energy is not what's happening right now because you're there sort of quarantined at the house in, in Florida. Tell us what have you been doing, Pablo, since all of this happened? Yeah. Well, you know, I've been touring for 22 years. I know I look young on television, but, uh, but you know, honestly, this is the first time in 22 years I have stayed in one place for two months, two and a half months. I've been here for yeah. two and a half months. I haven't gone anywhere. Right. Um, so it's been uh, it's been different, you know, definitely. I mean, I, I've enjoyed the time home, to be honest with you, with my wife and my daughter here. But um, it is what it is. You know, we're all in the same boat together. I just wish that everyone stays safe, stay healthy. Mm -hmm. and. All, it'll all work out in the end. I'm hoping that we'll get back to normal at some point. You know. Have you been uh, working on new music? Have you been playing, yeah. toying around while you're there? I have. I'm writing my new album. So I'm writing my new album. Um, I've uh, I've lost 17 pounds. So hey. that's I've learned how to type properly. <laughs> I'm just trying to make this time somewhat of a, of a productive time for me. Sure, absolutely. When I back at the quarantine time. I don't want to say that I didn't do anything, you know. So right, exactly. You know, and and, and just again, you know, um, working on different uh, projects, you know, in the future, of course, uh, dealing with cancellations, of course, as yeah. many, many sure. of you know, uh, I've I've canceled twenty five concerts mm. so far. Yeah, uh, which it is what it is, you know. But. Right, exactly. Uh, I would imagine too, if there's any silver lining, is the time spent with the family, which sometimes you're not always able to do because you are on the road with the gang and you know touring here, there, and everywhere. So it's kind of beautiful to have at least some time with the family, right? Yeah, it is, and that that's the positive part of it, you know, yeah. with love. But I am also fortunate, as you know, Jim, as well. My, my wife Sandra also manages my career, yeah. and my daughter Viola, she's homeschooled, so she actually travels with us. For the better part of uh, of our tours, um, so they are with me anyway. You know when we're on tour and stuff, but it's nice for all of us to sit home, be on a routine. I've never had a routine in over right. two decades. You know, right, exactly. I, I sleep ten hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but I sleep ten <laughs> hours a day. You know, I eat lunch at the same time. I won't I won't tell you what time that is because it's very <laughs> late day, but I eat lunch at the same time. Every day. I eat dinner at the same time every day. I've never had that in my life. <laughs> you know, so it's, you know it, it, there is some positive to it. And I, and I choose to keep uh, the positive in front of right. me and forget right. the Absolutely. That's I'm, I agree. That's the best way to be, you know, love and light and inspiration and empowerment and just looking forward. Let, let's uh, acquaint lots of folks watching right now around the world. Let's acquaint the audience who might be discovering you for the first time, Pablo, and your amazing music. How did you first get started? Um, did you come from a musical family? I know you have a wonderful, you, you, you talk about your father a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was a lucky kid, Jim. You know, I started playing guitar at the age of 10. Um, I had an older cousin who had guitars lying around at his house. Um, so I, I picked it up at the age of 10, and decades later, I, I haven't let it go. You know I mean? I, I just, it was an instant love affair with the guitar. But that's, you know, that was the beginnings of it. But my father was, um, was uh, someone who was uh, very important in my life, and still is important in my life. Um, he... Uh, saw that I loved this instrument. He saw the passion, the, the the you know, the work that I put into it, and he supported me. He supported me f from going to lessons to getting me you know in into university. From from you know, I remember the early days. I used to play 
uh, uh, craft shows in mm -hmm. Toronto. And my dad would come and sell the CDs while I was playing guitar. This way, I wouldn't have to pay anybody, you know. So I, right. you, know, you know, and you know, so he helped me all the all the way. That's dad, yeah. Yeah, it's dad, you know. So I, I had I had a and, and, you know, into the into the present time, having my wife managing uh, my my affairs and my my tours, and um, I've had a lot of great support, family support, and that's why family to me um, is, is everything. It, it really is, you know. So uh, did you study? Tell us about the progress and the progression of your career and your yeah. education. Yeah, when I was a kid, I immediately took lessons. You yeah. know? But you know, as, when you're young, you don't know exactly where you're going to end up. So I took classical guitar lessons. I took flamenco lessons. I took blues lessons. I took rock lessons, jazz lessons. I mean, I took every kind of guitar lesson you could possibly manage, imagine. And then I eventually went to university. I studied music at the York, York University in Toronto. Um, and then, you know, without even knowing, it starts happening. You start creating your sound, you know. So yeah, I grew up in a Greek family in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So Greek sound, songs were familiar to me. Greek sounds from Buzuki were familiar to me. But, you know, growing up as a typical Canadian kid, I also grew up listening to Joni Mitchell or, or, or Gordon Lightfoot or, you know, those kind of uh, uh, singer-songwriters. And eventually I sort of started to melt that. Right. You know, without knowing again, I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew what I was doing. I did not know what I was doing. I just started to write in that style. I started combining a little bit of flamenco, a little bit of Latin, a little bit of bazooki. Um, and then I started, you know, I, I came up with this sound that we now call Mediterranean style. Um, that's what we call it. I mean, I, I didn't know what to call it back then. I just called it my new song, you know? Right, right, exactly. So it just eventually sort of, I, I found my way, uh, I, I found my sound, basically, if you will, you know? Do you remember the very first concert professionally, where it was and what, what it was about? First concert. Well, my first professional concert, it was I was 12 years old. Wow. I, 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 <laughs> it's actually funny. I, I went to the principal um, and I asked if I could uh, not rent, but borrow the gymnasium because I didn't have any money. I said, could I put on a concert in the gymnasium when it wasn't you know, used for basketball? And he said, sure. So I charged a quarter, 25 cents. I mean, 200 people showed up, but yeah. in Greek family, 175 of them were my relatives. You know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I charged them a quarter each. And, uh, and that was my first concert. I, I put it together. I promoted it. I put little posters in the school uh, library <laughs> and, and played every song that I knew at the time, you know, like this one. <laughs> So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. You know, um, you, you really do have an incredible range. I know we talked about Mediterranean music, but you have the ability to really incorporate a lot of different styles into your music, right? Tell us about that, Pablo. Yeah, I mean, you know, now fast forward to decades later, I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world. And um, I've heard so many different sounds and musicians, and I've seen so many different instruments from all over this planet. So I, you know, I love mixing stuff. I, you know, obviously it's all guitar based music. You know, that this is my, you know, I'm the writer. So the guitar is my instrument and that's what drives it. But, you know, I have the Greek bazooki in my music. I have Latin percussion. Um, I have incorporated the Portuguese guitar. Mm. I've incorporated the, uh, the Chinese upright uru, which is mm -hmm. an upright violin. I've incorporated, you know, um, Tabla, Indian tabla. I mean, every kind, you know, dozens of different types of instruments from dozens of countries. Uh, it's basically a melting pot. At the end of the day, it's just, it's music, right? I mean, we, we, we categorize it Mediterranean style music. But as you know, uh, a few years ago, I've changed the, 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 the title of my music. I call it feel good music. That's right. What <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. For, for a short time. So let's just have a good time. And my music is about feeling good. Well, music can be very healing as well. It has a lot of healing properties. And, you know, during these times of what we've been going through, the unprecedented situation here, uh, music like yours can absolutely speak to the heart and to the soul and get people, you know, feeling good about things again and get them really connected again and grounded again. And that's really important, right? It is. I mean, when we say music is a universal language, it crosses borders. There's no demographic i mean it you know it's true you know it really is true you know and and especially in times like this i mean 
I, I couldn't imagine life without music. And not because I'm a guitar player and this is what I do for a living. It's because music is, our, is a soundtrack to our lives. It really is, you know. Right, exactly. So yeah. I mentioned that you've had, uh, which I've had an opportunity to be a part of, uh, through PBS, these amazing specials, the one in uh, Castoria, Live Castoria, what was it like putting that together? Because that that really was fantastic. You know, Live in Castoria was that dream concert. You know, it really was. It was, Castoria is the town uh, where my parents came from in the northern part of Greece. And as a child, I went to Greece every summer wow. to visit my relatives and my family. Um, and it was always a dream to go to the top of this mountain where there's old sort of amphitheater is situated and do a concert you know i mean i didn't know what that meant back then um and as i got a little bit older and a little bit more successful in my career i thought you know what i'm going to make that dream a reality and it took me several years uh to do it and and, and i did and i recorded it for pbs and really you know how can i say it there's a lot that went on behind the story you know sure. I, I mean, Three days before the show, for example, um, the, the the banks closed in Greece. Right. There was that economic uh, meltdown, and if you can imagine, three, you know, so now I have no access to money to pay for the team that's going to record the special. So, so many things went on around. The 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 the, the, the power went out halfway through the concert. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I just I just had you know, and everyone was frantic. I had a team of thirty people. Uh, in, in film crew and in the audio and all that, and everyone's frantic. I'm just like, it's going to work out, you know? Right, it, yeah, it, calm down. And, and it did, and it did, it somehow did. And I thought, listen, in worst case scenario, this would be the most expensive home video I've ever done, in <laughs> you know? And I have it as a memory. Uh, but it worked out. We brought all the tapes back to, to America, and we uh, introduced it to PBS and it worked out. History. I am so humble, Jim. The, the, the show Live in Castoria has aired over 1,000 times in the U.S. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, which I can't believe, you know. And like you say, it, it, it was a special connection with the family connection, and your family was there in the audience, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, my, my relatives were there, and they were crying, and they were laughing. I mean, there were tears of joy, but it was just such a beautiful, warm welcome. They had never seen me perform before. Right. Oh, they, really? You no, know, my relatives and, and friends and family in Greece had never seen me perform. So wow. I don't even know if they even knew what to expect. You know, mm -hmm. so every reaction that you saw on the television show was a real genuine real, right. real reaction to the music. You know, it was a beautiful, magical evening. Really uh, the the setting stunning as well. And another place, uh, your most recent last year in yeah. live in Guadalajara. Tell yeah. us about that. That was amazing, too. It was. And with Guadalajara, I played in Mexico uh, over the better part of my career and always wanted to do a, another PBS special there. And we did. But this one, as you know, it was uh, myself and my band. Uh, and then my music composed and performed with a 95-piece Philharmonic Orchestra. Right, so right. That was the first time I ever recorded on television Pablo music with an orchestra. And the Guadalajara Philharmonic, we were, were amazing, you know. Yeah. So that was another sort of, you know, bucket list of mine. Uh, and to perform in the Degollado Theater, which is a really historic, you know, um, uh, uh, theater in, in Guadalajara. Um, so it was another magical moment. Honestly, I, I pinch myself every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I really do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it was uh, an introduction to different styles of music that uh, if people were fans of yours, maybe they were tasting for the very first time and fell in love with while you were there in Guadalajara. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, um, you know, it, it's to do what you love in life, I, I think, is, is the most um, incredible blessing one can have. And you can't take it for granted. You know, right. you, you really can't. And I, and I don't, you know, I, I, I always say this from the stage and I'll say it to you today. I live a very simple life. I just I, I love to play my music. I love to write my songs. And my, my forever, my endeavor is, is to basically share my music with the world. And mm. that, that's, that's my life's journey. This is right. what it is. You know? and, and of course, it comes through albums and TV shows and ups and downs and pandemics and, and whatever else that life will throw at you. But that's my mission, you know, and my mission is to share my music with the world. 
that's it. That's it. And you're doing a beautiful, beautiful job of that, Pavlo. You've touched so many lives. And again, it's it's inspiring. I, I'm similar to you in, in doing the work that I love on television and radio all these years. And when you know that you're inspiring others and empowering others through the work that comes almost effortlessly, you know, through training and years of putting in the blood, sweat and tears, but it's work that um, is just inside you. And when you know when you're connecting with people and you're putting a smile on their face and you're lifting them up, uh, there's really nothing more incredible than that feeling and that knowledge, knowing something that you're doing that you love is impacting others in such a beautiful way, right? Yeah, and I feel blessed to be a part of that. You know, really, I mean, the, the stories and the emails that we get from people all over the world saying that my music brought them through hard times and through good times. Uh, my music accompanied them at, at, at family gatherings. I mean, who am I to even be able to be a part of that? Like, uh, that, I, I feel so special. I, I really mm. do, you know, and um, it's, it's, it's a blessing and it's a privilege and I never, ever take that for granted, you know. Absolutely. I want to show people another clip here of you in action. And this is something not that long ago. We'll take a look and then we'll talk about it right after. Here it comes. Hi, Paolo. I've got Billy coming. Billy Raffle. Yeah. We love it so much. We want to play it again and again. <laughs> Tell us about that amazing collaboration that you guys had. That was really, really incredible. You know, Billy Raffool is an amazing young artist. If you don't know about him now, he already has a million followers on, on Spotify, a million listeners a month. He's going to be massive. And most importantly, he's just the most 
humble, kind, six foot five kid you'll ever meet. You know, yeah. He is. He's that kind. And he's so talented. He's got amazing songs. He's already worked with the world's best. And, and look out for that name. You know, I, I love collaborating with old, young. I mean, I'm right in the middle. I'm not very old. I'm not quite young, but you know, I'm right in the middle. There. I love sure. collaborating with everybody, Jim. You know, I write songs. That's what I do. You know, and right. I love collaborating, writing songs with others. Uh, some are vocal songs, some are instrumental songs, but the core of what I do, it's, it, the, it, I'm a writer. I'm a writer. Right. You know? And that collaboration was special. You know, he's such a, an incredible, unique voice, as you just heard. Yeah, absolutely. And that song was on um, uh, a more recent album called um, Together. And that record of mine, I keep saying record, um, that CD um, was a collaboration with 11 different singers and 11 different writers uh, and all vocals, you know. Uh, it was fun. It was fun to do. You know, Jody was on it, of course. I mean, Billy was on it, Billy Rafool. Right. Uh, and um, uh, Liz Rodriguez is on mm -hmm. my Together album. Liz Rodriguez wrote all six uh, six songs from Celine Dion's new album. You know, some really notable, incredible artists are on that album. And it's all a collaboration album. You know? So I'm having fun. You know, I'm, yeah, having, absolutely. I'm having fun writing, meeting new artists, uh, working uh, with people that I admire. And, and I feel, I feel, you know, I feel humbled just to be in the room with everybody. You know? <laughs> It <laughs> I know that you like a drink of choice. This is yes. Oh, we've got to. Absolutely. We've got a toast. We've got a toast to friendship yes. and to wonderful music. Let's see if we can put it close without spilling it on our keyboards. There we go. Clang. There we go. California. Yeah. Woo. yeah. Is that even allowed? Can you actually do this? I guess so. Right? Why not? That's right. It's social media. Um, oh. So how do you say cheers in Greek? Uh, yamas. 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 That's fantastic. So are there are there any other artists that uh, we always have a good time when we're together, Pablo? You know <laughs> we do, we do. I have a power. Uh oh yeah. <laughs> I can kiss my here we go. Oh, <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> when he comes over, hide the good china. He brings his own. <laughs> if you get home, try it. If you're in your kitchen, if you're in the dining room, break the plates. You'll feel great. That's right. If you're having a tough day, go for the plates. <laughs> That's right. So are, are there any artists like that you dream of that you would love to collaborate with? You've collaborated oh. with a lot of greats, but I'm sure you have a list of those you would love to collaborate with, Pablo. Where, where do I start? I mean, Sting? Mm. One of my great one. Yeah. Oh, my God. You can believe it. Um, this might be an odd one for most people. I would love to collaborate with Lady Gaga. Mm. You know, I, I think she is incredible. You know, yeah. she's yeah. an incredible singer, incredible musician, incredible writer. And I think that my guitar playing in a Lady Gaga song would be perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Lady Gaga, if you're watching, here we are. <laughs> Here's Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you want to play something for us a little bit since you've got that guitar there? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music do you, I think I asked you this on uh, television in the interview. Um, what kind of music does Pablo enjoy and listen to? What kind of music does Pablo enjoy? Um, you know, every, anything that moves me. Right. Honestly. So it's every genre um, and anything that moves me, you know, recently, um, recently, um, this might surprise people. And, and I just, it's not, you know, obviously she writes for a younger audience, but I appreciate her uniqueness. And it's, um, it's, um, oh, I forgot her name. I, I yeah. Like, um, oh yeah. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Billie Eilish. Is it Billie Eilish? Yeah. Um, yes. A yeah. young artist. She's uh, really, uh, she's been know, well, it, coming. It, you know, she, obviously her, her, her lyrical content is for a younger audience, 
But what I appreciate from her is her uniqueness and not uh, to be afraid to try something different. You know, when she right. came to the scene, she wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. She did something very unique to herself. And, and, and that's what I appreciate about it. So I appreciate anyone that's unique, that tries to do something authentic, that tries to do something from the heart. You right. know, sometimes that doesn't mean that masses will like it, you know. I'm sure her, when she released at the age of 16, I don't think she thought that the world would embrace what she did. She just did it because she loved because what she, she loves. was doing. She, right. she was doing that of her own house, you know. So that's kind of my trip. You know, my trip from the beginning, uh, <clears throat> Jim, was I played what I loved. Right. I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, when I picked up the guitar, I didn't know anything about touring. I knew nothing about, you know, I just, I just know that when I put the guitar in my hands, at the age of 10, it made me feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. all I knew, you know. Exactly, I right. Mean, I would just practice. I'd write songs. And then eventually I'd do concerts. And, you know, I, you know, inevitably, you know, I made a career out of it. But it didn't even start like that. It just started because I love to play, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no competition. There's no, you know, there wasn't like, you know, you, 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 uh, you know, uh, apply to, to, to compete against people on TV. That wasn't my world. It right. isn't my world now. It still know? isn't, right. Exactly. You know, I, I want to communicate. I want to play songs. And when people come out and they feel good and they're laughing in the audience and they're having a great time and, and they walk away uplifted, man, that makes me feel so good. That's why I do it, you know. That, yeah, that's right. Having been to your concerts, I can wholeheartedly put my stamp on that because you really, I mean, you come off the stage, you're, you're working with the audience, everybody's having such a great time. Tell us about your, your concerts and what people uh, experience and what it is you hope people are left with when they come to a Pavlo concert, wherever they are around the world. A memory. That's it. Just a yeah. great memory. You know, just a great memory. That's all. When, when people leave... And they feel that the last two hours of their life was well spent, that they experienced it with their 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 husband or wife or their grandkid or with their daughter, it, it, you know. And they leave with a nice memory. That's it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that that makes me feel great. You know? Absolutely. And you improvise too, which is cool. During the you respond oh. to the audience, respond to the other band members. You just have a really good old fun time, right? Yeah, I mean. First of all, I'm blessed that I have, you know, an incredible band around me. Yeah, that those guys are good. You know, so, and I, I should mention them because they're, yes. they're they're my friends, they're my family, and they're my my my. You know, Gino Maurizio uh, plays percussion for me, and Gino has been with me for twenty years, actually, mm. twenty years exactly, which represents over three thousand concerts. Wow. Curtis Freeman, uh, longtime bass player, he's been with me for a long time as well. Uh, amazing human being, an amazing bass player. Uh, Demetrius Bogris plays bouzouki, uh for me. Uh, again, one of the world's best at what he does. These guys, you know, it's a privilege to be on stage with them. And every night, of course, we're playing my music for my career, but every night we're improvising, we're making things longer, shorter, we're speeding it up, whatever makes us feel right at the moment, you know. And I'm I am I'm able to do that because I have such incredible musicians behind me. You know? Absolutely. Well, what do you think inspires you to do what you do? Obviously, you said that you you do it out of the love of doing it. It's it's something that just comes to you naturally. But are you an observer of life? Are there things that you see that spark your inspiration for your music as well? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I I'm um, how do I say this? I don't want to say old fashioned. I'm a type of writer that I can only write when I'm inspired. Right. You know what I mean? So like there's a lot of Nashville cats that I admire. They're writers. They go into the songwriting houses in Nashville. They punch in their clock from nine to five and they're writing tunes every day. I can't do that. Right. I wish I could, but I can't do that. I can only write when I'm inspired. You know, sometimes I'll write a song in 10 minutes. Sometimes it'll take me three years to finish a song. Um, it's just the way I'm wired, you know? And I mean, I've written hundred, I've written thousands of songs. I've recorded hundreds of songs. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm pretty active in doing it, but I can only write when I'm inspired. So basically what I've done is, you know, how my process is that when an idea comes to me, no matter where I am, right, on the beach in Clearwater or, you know, or, you know, or in Toronto or wherever I am in an airplane, when an idea comes to me, 
I record it. I record the melody. I mean, back in the day, and this was embarrassing, back in the day, I used to carry a cassette tape recorder. It was this big, you know? Yeah. And I'd have to I, re I, re I remember those. Yeah. But I had an idea, and I'd have to press the, I had to make sure I had a blank tape, and I would sing that idea if I didn't have my guitar with me. In today's day and age, it's a lot easier because I just different. have my. My, my smartphone, you know, so. I went around with the cassette recorder interviewing the family. I was sort of like yeah. this TV host reporter back then. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so in the, in today's day and age, I record these ideas on my iPhone. Right. And this way I know that when I go back to it and mm -hmm. I, you know, like right now, I'm writing a new album. And I literally have about 200 musical ideas that I've recorded over the last little while. As I've been traveling, you know, the idea comes. So this one, when I go to the idea, I know that it came from a real place. Right. You know what I mean? So then I'll sit down, okay, I'll look at all these ideas. Okay, these seven ideas could form one song. Kind of idea, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's kind of the way I go about it. I just, I never wanted to, I never want to be put in a position where, okay, write a song. I just can't do that, right? Right, right, exactly. It's kind of come to me, and then when I'm ready to do the album, I go back to my catalog of inspired moments and I piece them together for a song. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that, no, that's, it does. No, yeah, exactly. No, you know, yeah. Right, exactly. You have to have that inspiration in order for it to really be the way you want it to be. And you don't want to just, you don't want it to be a factory cookie cutter approach, pretty yeah, much. Exactly. It's a, it's the kind of music that I play. You know, my music is, is without words for the most part. Right. Because when I play a note, Like it has to mean something. You know? mm, so, mm. Okay. What are you feeling when you're playing? What 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 happens? Are you transported somewhere else when you're playing? I'm definitely transported. I don't know where to. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, every night in concert, um, you know, I play with my eyes closed a lot. Even yeah. though I'm up dancing, I'm always up standing and dancing. But um, I just let I just let it go. You know, I just let it go. Sometimes I'll think about where I wrote that song, why I wrote that song. Sometimes I think about, you know, uh, just being happy in that moment, you know, but I, I get transported, you know, yeah. every night is a different experience. You know, th this song, Cafe Castoria, that was with you know, every time I play that song every night, it'll have a different feel to it, depending on how I feel that night. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound too weird. I, it's just, no, it's, yeah, it's just me. Like, I, I can't do it the same way. Like, sometimes, I'll change parts. I'll I'll do the verse twice as long. If it just felt good that night, right, I'll right, do the verse twice, <laughs> right, <laughs> and I'll do the chorus once, or I'll or I'll repeat the whole thing because I've gone out into the audience and I've spent three minutes there. So you know, I, I'm really loose like that. I just let the music dictate, the feeling dictate. You know, I know it's old fashioned in a lot of ways, but I like it that way. You know, I'm old just, school is great. Absolutely, yeah. Musicians on stage do their thing. You know, right. We're not exactly. playing the track. We never played the track. We don't lip sync. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're just playing our instruments. You know, that's all. It's all authentic. We've got, uh, oh my, you won't believe the amount of comments we have coming in that are absolutely incredible. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, also a friend of Maid Nesbitt from Celtic Woman is Tiffany Lawrence. She's watching in Chicago. She's a uh, phenomenal violinist. Oh, cool. She Hello. is here. Martha Oliver Swartz says, hi, Jimmy, Jimmy, Coco Pop. That's what she calls me. She's in Michigan, a big fan. Uh, Marianne Kelly says hello, and Christopher Joseph, he is a musician in right. Ohio. He says hello. Happy Tuesday evening, everyone, from Sharon DeMaria. Let's see. Oh, Minerva, Santiago. She calls me Coastal Chico because everywhere, every time we go away on vacation, I'm usually in or on the ocean because I grew up on the coast. Yeah. So if I post pictures where I'm around water, she lives in New York City. She dubbed me because she sort of virtually goes on these vacations with me, looking at the, the photos of me in the ocean, surfing and boogie boarding, whatever I'm doing. You got to drag me out of the ocean. She says, I'm going to start calling you Coastal Chico. So that's what she calls me. And I call her city girl in New York City. She's, <laughs> she sends her love. She's here watching as well. I can't believe the amount of comments we've got coming in here. There's such love coming in tonight. Uh, and you get that. You understand. You know what that's all about. Uh, you, you give back so much, Pablo. I, I enjoy doing it as well. Red wine. We're nervous having red wine uh, with us tonight. Cheers from Sharon. And let's see. 
Susie Heiston Pavlo concerts are amazing. Oh. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, knew it. Me and her. Let's see. Christine Fairwood. Tito's and orange juice here had Diet Coke last night. Need to pick up tonight. Stressful day. Well, I tell you, you're going to be de-stressed listening to the fantastic music of Pablo. Let's see. We also have Minerva. You cracked me up. Ken in New York says, hello, everybody. And hi, Ken. And greetings, folks. We always... I like to be like you. I like to get the audience engaged. You do it when you're, uh, you know, uh, in concert. I like to do it here with the group. Hi, Ken, Christine, Marianne, Minerva, everyone else. And this one's saying hello, Martha, to Christine. And Kathleen Walker, who's in New York City, says hello. Minerva says hola. Hola, Minerva. Hola, hola Minerva. Hola, and hola. <laughs> that's right. Happy birthday, everyone, all the people with their birthdays. Uh, so talking about the people and the birthdays, didn't <laughs> Andre and Gentle Giant. Oh, that's Andre the Giant we were talking about earlier. And hilarious. Hi, Pablo. Hello, Viva. <laughs> yes, that's right. So beautiful, smooth. Love the music. Absolutely. Got some smiles there from Minerva. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if she's trying to say Opa. Wepa. <laughs> That's the Latin version of Opa. Wepa. Wepa. There you go. This is beautiful music from Austin Greenfield. Yeah. Maestro. Yes, he absolutely is. I get all these uh, hearts and roses from Minerva. She's loving it. Ken says Pablo is awesome. Yes, he is. And he's, a, he's the real deal. He's really a good hearted guy. Love his music, Minerva. And let's see. And love the harmonics of Pablo's playing. That's from Christopher. Sleeping 10 hours, we're glad I'm not the only one. You were saying you sleep 10 hours. <laughs> 10 hour club. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very impressive, studying all styles of music, which is great. And we've got uh, Dara Johnson. I am a living testimony of Pablo's healing oh, music. Thank you. Thank from Dara, Dara Johnson. We appreciate that. And Cindy, watching from Sarasota, Florida, USA. Hi, Cindy. Good to have you with us. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern on Jim Master Show. Join us. And Pablo's music, humble man that he is, absolutely. We've got some more, folks. Well, Cindy, again, the Live in Astoria concert, fantastic. She purchased the DVD. That is amazing. That's fantastic. I agree. Uh, you never know what could happen at a Pablo show, Regina. Regina, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and the Guadalajara special yeah. stunning. The orchestra brought something special to the performance. Yes, they did as well. Your music gets me through all my good and bad times. We were just talking about that, Pablo, right? How music can really, really do that, especially your style of music. Billy and Pablo's humility is why his music heals. Yes, he is a very humble Humble guy, absolutely. So true. Minerva again with all of her stars and happiness. Let's see. Austin Greenfield says, love the interview with the songs woven in. This is awesome. Uh, Billy is great. Uh, the collaboration Pablo does are wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Kathleen says, nice music. Very talented. Mm -hmm. Cheers from Minerva. This is incredible, right? Uh, I knew you would break a plate. <laughs> so did I. So did I. <laughs> many, many in studios and now at home. Love it. Uh, thank you, Minerva. We appreciate that. Oh my gosh, too much wine. They are going for the plates. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All the time, right? All the time. Let's see. Karen Ayani, who is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, loving this interview. I didn't know of him until tonight. Fantastic. I'm glad you learned about it here on the show, Karen. Uh, you're a blessing to have with us as well. New fan here, Pablo, as well. Austin Greenfield says, hopefully Pablo doesn't have to clean up the mess. <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> he does. He does. Oh, here we go. Regina says, oh, Gaga would be amazing. That collaboration. Perfect. Jim says, awesomeness. Yes, well Welcome, Jim. Welcome all the new viewers who are joining us here on the Jim Masters Show. My guest is That's Pablo. My cousin from Rochester, by the way. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. A thousand cousins. <laughs> that is fantastic. And yes, Billy Eilish. Uh, Christopher loves that. Hello, Jim. 
Jimmy Sia, good afternoon. Oh, Izzy Gare, Izzy Gare. Yes, yeah, she's always uh, following me on all the social media. She's a beautiful, beautiful person. Uh, definitely feel good music. Yes, it is. Saludos a Pablo. She's sending us uh, salutations, which is beautiful. Let's see, here we go. Uh, best band ever. She lists everybody in that band. And so true, Regina. Let's see. Again, it goes on and on. We got him coming in. Pablo, great tips on songwriting. Have you ever had people ask you, Pablo, to instruct them, to teach them, you know, whether it's courses or lessons or because uh, you're so skilled at it? Well, I have had uh, I've had people ask me for lessons, but I mean, my, my, my life is about is about touring. It's very difficult to teach lessons um, uh, while on tour because, you know, normally, you know, I, I'm doing about 150 shows a year, perhaps. Yeah the lessons while i've been home you know uh, but what i do do and this is my little sort of giving back um when i went to university in toronto after i finished my in my in music in york, york university i went to another school post uh, a university called the harris institute for the arts and there i took a one year crash course on the music business and that's where my life really changed i started to learn about music publishing and concert promotion and and you know um you know entertainment law for example um so and that was many years ago so that that particular education bit really changed my life so i do go back at least once maybe twice a year i fly back to toronto and i always conduct uh, a class uh where i talk to the to the new students uh, about my my uh, career and um um you know the possibilities of following your dreams so i do do that every a few times a year that's fantastic. That's really beautiful, Pablo. Uh, Willis says, hello, Pablo. Good to see you. Give my best to all the guys in your band. Willis from Wichita, Kansas. Oh, Willis. Hey, Willis. I was in Wichita on a TV shoot uh, about two years ago, and everybody told us to go in Wichita downtown to the Do Da Diner, which is really, really famous, and it was really delicious. And uh, Wichita is a great city. It's a terrific place. And I agree with uh, what Ken says. The world needs Pablo's music. Absolutely. Uh, Regina says, 10 hours sleep, I wish. <laughs> Pablo is great. And we've got some more comments coming in. Again, you know me, Pablo. I like to be interactive with everybody. And uh, Willis gives the best to all the, the guys in the band. Yes. Minerva, once again, says, Weppa. And let's see. Uh, Pablo, amazing soul. Uh, let's see. More coming in. Cindy says, Pablo shows are so upbeat and fun you never want it to end that is true i agree and oh yes uh send our love to pablo and family definitely they are all right there watching as we speak uh let's see barcelona spain as well coming in from barcelona spain is igari pablo is great yes we agree uh oh boy here we go uh, hey buddy i got it while you speak there I got a serenade. <laughs> Let's see. If you go to a Pablo concert, make sure you meet him and all the band. The guys are great. Then go talk to Sandra. She's the best. Yes, she is. Isn't Sandra she? Is the ruler of all things. Yeah. <laughs> As they say, look. Yes, Sandra, boss lady. <laughs> Opa from Calgary, Canada. Hello, Kelly. Pablo cleaning up his mess. He is so humble. <laughs> I have someone else going to do it. <laughs> That's right. It's a uh, uh, Minerva says, Ole. <laughs> That's it. That's funny. Oh, I can comment all night about my Pablo concert memories. Too many to count, right, Pablo? Yeah. yeah you're Regina. We're right there with you. He's the, he's the best. And she's, she's been to many of the shows across the country. Uh, Pablo, thank you for your pearls of wisdom as well. I mean, this is really fantastic. I mean, lots of love coming in. And again, I invite everybody, if you're just joining us for the first time, I am your host, Jim Masters. We're here every single night doing this seven nights a week at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, the Jim Masters Show with great guests like Pablo, amazing people. Pablo, isn't it nice when you get a chance to get uh, feedback like that from such special people from all around the world. It is, it is. It's humbling, honestly. It's humbling, and I consider everyone my friend. You know, I, I really do. And you know, that's why the concerts are so special to me, Jim. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter if it's in Wichita, Kansas. It doesn't matter if we're in New York, if we're in Nashville, if we're in Tampa, Toronto, wherever it is. We're all 
in it together. Do you know what I mean? Like we're in the theater. It doesn't matter if it's right. a 2,000 theater, seat theater, a 1,000 seat theater. We're all in it together, and we're just enjoying each other's company. And that's really what my shows are about. I'm playing my music. We're all together, and we're just having a great time. And that's why when I when I, you know, I don't know if the audience feels like this, but when I leave my my concert, when I when the concert is done, I feel like everyone's my friend. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I really feel like that. A lot of the names that I see here, I, I recognize most of them because they're not my fans; they're my friends. You know, exactly. And Kip is a friend of mine. He's also a musician and a guitarist, and he's uh, been hearing about your music. I've been raving about it, and. Uh, wow. He's discovering you right now, and this is really amazing. A lot of these people, too. Uh, Ruth, another. Pablo yes, is the best. Well. Mm -hmm. New York City misses you, absolutely. And Izzy in Barcelona. Great stuff, Pablo, great stuff. You, you wanna play something else for us? Perfect. That is perfect. Hold on, my drink of choice. Yes, yes we've got to uh, let's wet, wet those tonsils, right? As Jim Masters and to you and to you and to you. To you and to you and to you. That's right. That's my line. That's right. Yeah. How do you like uh, my cast of characters? My George Burns. I love George Burns. Oh my goodness. When you when you uh, when I saw that at the beginning of the show, yeah, it just brought back so many memories. Yeah. Because father and I um, used to watch. Um, all of those shows, especially the where you know where they were, used to roast each other, Dean Martin and uh, oh yeah, Johnny Carson back in oh, the, the day. best. And yeah. George Burns was on a few of those. It just brought yeah. back so many memories, you know. Yeah, I've I've always admired you know as a host myself those guys, the Johnny Carsons, the Merv Griffins, the Dick Clark's. That you could plug those guys in anywhere, and they can do. I, I've hosted so many different kinds of shows over the years. Yeah. Um, and have done so many different things in the industry. And those are the kinds of guys that you can, they're versatile. You can plug them in anywhere. They can do game shows, music shows, news, talk, whatever it is. And that's they're, like, you're very versatile. They're entertainers. They're entertainers, right. And I think that's, uh, you know, one of the things that I think is it makes us kindred spirits in many ways is the way we look at life. We like to inspire people. We like to empower people. You and I both like to lift people up. But it's also the fact that there's some of that old school quality in there too that we don't let go of that really I think stands out and um, people enjoy because again, there's so much coming at people today. There's so much, you know, buzz and everything is quick and fast, but when you can take time to breathe and really appreciate the things in life that matter, there's nothing better, right, Pablo? There's nothing better. Exactly. And life can be uh, incredibly fast paced, Yeah. but you have to learn to just stop it and enjoy the moment. And it's a, it's interesting because we're in a time where we all had to stop because we had no choice. Right. You know, and of course you can get angry and upset and negative. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, I'm human. I had my, I had my moments too, where I felt a little frustrated as I saw all my concerts start to get canceled one by one, you know, but then I thought, you know what, hold on a sec. Life is good. You know, I'm healthy. My family is healthy. The concerts will resume. They will. And, and I apologize from the bottom of my heart because I know a lot of people have taken flights to come in and see me in Hartford, wherever, you know, all the shows that we had planned um, in Minneapolis. You know, they will happen at some point, I promise you. And I apologize if it took, you know, if it was an inconvenience to everyone. There was absolutely nothing that I could do. Um, but we will do the shows again and we'll see each other again. I, You know, when people say, oh, Will ever will, will ever return um, back to the way it was? It absolutely will. I mean, can you imagine not doing concerts? Can yeah. you imagine sitting a hundred feet from from your neighbor? No, that can't happen. You know, we're we're going through a pandemic craziness, uh, but life will will go back. You know, it'll go back to where it was. You know, we've you know the Acropolis, the Herak Atticus Acropolis in Athens, was built over two thousand years ago. And they enjoy those concerts the same way they did up until three months ago. So right. that's not going to change in our lifetime. Right. We will do concerts. We will be together with our friends and our family, and and we'll have we'll, we'll be we'll have a great time again as well. You know.
we'll be back, you know, and, and, and I look forward to it. I look forward to seeing everybody again, you know. Let's talk about that uh, in terms of when you're back. Like you said, you're, you're writing music, you're using this time, you know, to spend time with the family downtime. I'm sure you're talking to, you know, the family overseas and in Canada and everywhere else. Um, some of the things that you're, you're, you're working on, I had mentioned in the introduction that the uh, filming that you're going to be doing in Santorini, Greece for your oh. next special was going to be happening in June. But of course, you know, that's coming up close and we're still dealing with the, the pandemic situation. But it's been shifted to August now? Uh, yeah. So Greece, if, if anyone's following uh, what's happening around the world, Greece is one of the top countries on the planet that have actually dealt with the pandemic uh, you know, in, in the most incredible way. Yeah, right. um, they only have, I think, 2,100 cases and very few uh, uh, deaths. I mean, every death is, is crazy. But you know, they, they've controlled it, and they're opening the, the tourism on July the 1st. So my show has been postponed from my, my concert special to be filmed for PBS has been postponed from June to August. So August 21 and 22 are the new dates for the filming of Pablo live in Santorini. You know, barring that nothing else happens, who knows? You know, but at this point, it's all a go, um, and it, it's it's it's, it's going to be a magical evening. And I and this is where I feel so upset. Like I know that many people. Um, had bought tickets, sure. Uh, rented hotels, spent thousands of dollars to be with us in June, and I'm just praying and I'm hoping that they'll be okay to change those plans to August. You know, and and I and I apologize that you know that that happened. There's nothing I can do. I mean, the country. Yeah. <laughs> it's happened to everybody, right? Everybody and in all walks of life, everything just sort of stopped. The restaurants, the hotels, the people in the offices. I mean, television stations have been closed, radio stations. So it's it's really, it's affected so many different people. Uh, can you give us a, maybe a, a little teaser on what you hope to do with that concert? How it will maybe be, this location is different, of course, but maybe some sampling of what you want to do with that concert? I can't tell you a thing, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> just, well, you know what? So the, the, the new PBS show there will be filmed on the cliffs of Sandorini. Mm. Um, so behind me will be the Aegean, the, the Mediterranean Sea, um, and the volcano. And um, and I have sp a lot of uh, special guests, incredible guests, some, I, some um, that I can't name and some I will name right now. Um, so we'll have Grenville Pinto returning as my guest violinist. Mm. Uh, he was my guest in Live in Castorio. Um, we will also have um, Lazo Ioannidis playing the lira. He will return to be my guest as well. Fantastic. Uh, and this one, I'm really this this guest I'm really excited about. She's considered one of the world's best accordion players. Mm. When I say accordion, you have not seen the yeah. thing the accordion can do until you've seen her. She is incredible. She lives in Athens, Greece. Her name is Zoe Tiganuria, and she'll be my special guest on the accordion. And man, I mean, she's worth the ticket alone, honestly. She is spectacular, and I feel honored to have her on my show. Uh, and then there's a few other, uh, there's a, a few vocalists um, that I can't uh, say at this point, uh, but we'll uh, probably announce um, before, the, uh, before August. Amazing. He asks about George Paris and Mario Frangoulis because I know both guys personally. And I interviewed Mario on public television several years back with one of his specials and George as well. Have you ever uh, collaborated or worked with those guys too there? I do know Mario. Um, he's, he's, I, I actually, I've met George as well. I've met George as well. Um, and I, and I do know Mario, um, uh, as well. And, uh, Hey, wouldn't they be a great guest? I'm just saying, I don't know, but yeah, it would be, it would be an honor to have Mario Frangulis uh, uh, or George uh, or both on the show. Yeah. They're both incredible singers. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it looks like, you know, no matter what, they're going to be there for you, which is great, whether in the U S or Canada, they're going to be there for you. And that's what it's all about. You know, fans follow and they love somebody and something that they believe in and, and you believe in the fans. And that's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful relationship you have with the fans, right? I, I'm, I'm similar with the work I do. It's, you know, if they were not there supporting our work, yeah, there's no work to be done. There's nothing to, you know, we could do it in our closets. We can do it in our living rooms, but um, without the people there supporting the work, um, none of it happens. Right. 
No, no, it does. You know, on, on that note, I have one more plate. I mean, I just happen to have enough. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, if people that are just joining us late, Opa, for those just joining us late in the game, I want to show you something again. I showed, uh, and you know, the, what was the seven o'clock hour? Come clean it up. Okay. Yeah, come clean it up. That's it. I want to show the audience again, this uh, segment. This is one of several segments we did together when I interviewed uh, <laughs> Pablo live in the studio. Uh, and we had some fun on, uh, on public television. All right, Pablo, we just saw you step down from the stage and dance in the aisles with members of the audience. Yeah. Any chance, and I think so again, because I was at your last concert, yeah. and you really do work with the audience, get in those aisles and you have yeah. a great time. Is it spontaneous? Is there a set list? What's it going to be? I mean, I never have a set list, you know, and all my shows are being, you know, it's, it's spontaneous is how I love. I mean, yeah. Speaking of spontaneity, uh -oh. here we go. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 I know you want to try this. Here we go. 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 With the whole, like a lot of people ask me about the plate breaking thing, for me it's just it's just having fun. That's all, and that's why I do it. You know, um, it's something that the, you know the Greek culture is kind of knowing known for it. You know, when we're dancing, a lot of times you know, there's a there's a dance called the Zimbekiko dance. Mm -hmm. it's a dance that we dance, and you know sometimes we'll break plates, and it, it's just it, it's it's a it's a a tool of enjoying the moment kind of idea, I guess. You know? That's Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Austin Greenfield says, how many plates have you broken in your lifetime? <laughs> it's in the thousands. That's in the thousands. <laughs> That's and great. I broke two right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so uh, with everything that's gone on and all this craziness of this unprecedented time, have th has there been anything that you've learned, uh, you know, coming through all of this pandemic situation, something that has uh, really level the playing field, you know, everybody's sort of equalized. Uh, you know, I've been telling people this is sort of, you know, it's been a horrific situation, of course, with the, the loss of life and the economic strife that's happening. But in a way, I think it's also, you know, out of crisis comes entrepreneurship, innovation, a lot of creativity. And I think that this is sort of a societal reset of sorts where maybe we'll come out of this with a sense of a little more empathy and kindness towards one another, collaborating, creating, helping one another a little bit more as people are trying to do to help us get through all of this. You find that, that this is sort of like maybe a pause that we can really seize Pavlo and, 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 and sort of flourish in it uh, for the positive. No, no question about it. I mean, you know, economically, a lot of us got devastated. You know, there's no question about it. You know, whether you lost your job or whether you've been laid off your job or whether you've been, your concerts have been canceled, whatever the issue is. Um, but what I've seen, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimistic guy. I mean, I can't help it, you know. And, and I just think that, you know, humanity will, will, will get through it and we will get to, to better times, you know. But what I've seen is that, we're all, we're all, you know, we're all in it together and we're all the same. How do I explain it? It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter if you drive, you know, a, an expensive car or a cheap car. Right. If the restaurants close, you're not getting in. <laughs> no, you're not going. That's it. And so that puts us all on the same level of playing field. And it is, it's, it's kind of an interesting feeling because, you know, you walk around and, you know, honestly, I, I've, I've, you know, I've been living here for years in Florida. I never knew my neighbors four doors down. Mm -hmm. Well, I now know the entire block. I walk my dog three times a day. <laughs> you right. Know, my, Sandra and I uh, do daily walks. We're swimming every day at the pool at the, in our in our neighborhood. I now know my entire neighborhood, yeah. and what a beautiful feeling. Right. You know, everyone. I can't believe it. I didn't, you know, I, I, it took this kind of pandemic for me to actually 
you know, uh, um, introduce myself to my neighbors. Can you mm -hmm. believe? You know, That's what's happening all around. Yeah. Incredible positive, Jim, isn't it? I now have, you know, 75 new friends on the street. And I love it. I love yeah. it. Part of right. my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you trade who? When you're able to, of course. <laughs> when you're able to. That's right. Do you mow each other's lawns too now? <laughs> sure why not? I've got lots of time. You know? <laughs> so, uh you know, obviously, like I said, you do this because you love it. You do it because it comes naturally. You've been doing it ever since you were a kid. And um, the feedback, could you have, if you look at the entire career so far in its, in its entirety, Pablo, yeah. um, could you ever have imagined it to be what it has become in terms of just how it's blossomed, how it's become international, and the love and support that continues to flow your way. When you were that 10 year old kid, yeah. picked up that guitar and plucking away there, could you ever have dreamed it would turn out the way it has so far? Never, I mean, I didn't know what I was, like I was saying earlier, I picked up the guitar and it made me feel good. And that's it, and then when I picked it up the next day, it made me feel good again, you know? Right. I have the guitar in my hand decades and decades later, and it still makes me feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I do it. The fact that I can do it for a living is a privilege. It's a blessing. Um, but even if I did, did, even if I did not have the opportunity to do it for a living, I think I'd still have my guitar in hand. You know, I, I really do. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I do it. I, I, you know, when, when someone can actually honestly say when they wake up in the morning that they're 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 going to a job that they love, that's a beautiful thing. You have to cherish that. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Pablo, you want to play something else for us before we get ready to wrap up? Uh, uh, we'll just jam up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hope everybody at home is on their feet. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually yeah. coming out on it. I'm just fooling around. I don't I, none of these are songs. They're just, just <laughs> yeah. Do you have the uh the fingers insured by Lloyds of London? No, 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 no. They're not important, <laughs> but they work. They work. Uh, but they work. <laughs> Well, Pablo, really a blessing, a blessing. Is there anything you'd like to say to our audience here in the Gym Masters show while you're here? Um, maybe it's something positive. I mean, your music does it, but maybe something direct while they're here. I love you all like my brothers and sisters. Stay safe, stay happy, take care of your families, take care of your friends, and we'll see you at the concerts. When it's safe to go back, we'll see you at the shows. And I promise you this, you're hearing this on the Gym Masters show. I promise you, these shows will be bigger and better and more exciting than ever before. That's it. That's it. Heard right here on the show. Pablo, you are the very, very best. Let's toast again. We got Jeannie and George, and we've got Silver the Dog and Jimmy the Clown and all of our fabulous viewers watching us. All the very best. We will see you again, my friend. The best to you and Sandra, everybody your family. Uh, you really are an amazing individual and I'm so excited and so happy that you were able to join me here in our infancy week three of the gym master show. It was a real blessing and cheers. I yep. can consider you a, uh, a friend for life, Pablo. You're amazing. You were a friend and me too. Thank you, my friend. You take care and enjoy. What did you say is in that glass or what's left of that? California Chardonnay. Mm. You've earned it. You've earned it. You've played for your uh, libation. <laughs> well, we got more before we wrap. We've got more uh, action. Woo hoo. Can't wait to see the next show and concert. A wonderful interview, Jim. Thank you. You're very, very welcome, Regina. I hope you'll spread the word. I'm here 7 p.m. Eastern every single night with the Gym Master Show. Great guests, a lot of fun, all kinds of good stuff. Susie says, uh, Pablo. Issy says, Chin Chin Salute. And good night as well. And Regina says, thanks, buddy. Great stuff. Good people. Great night, Pablo. I wish you the very best. We will be seeing you soon, I am sure. We're always in touch anyway. The best to the family. And thanks for being with us on the show. You're, you're amazing.
Thank you, my friend. Stay All safe. Right. You too. You take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye now. Was that not amazing? Was that not cool? Yes, Ken says Pablo's music helps us heal. I agree. Regina as well. Thanks for being with us here as well. You guys are amazing. If you're just watching us for the very first time, my name is Jim Masters. I'm a television and radio host, actor, journalist, uh, author, uh, voiceover artist, stage host, and MC. And I've had an opportunity to uh, work with Pablo uh, on public television specials when he's been in the studio and interviewing him in support of the great programming on PBS. And again, uh, when I said to Pablo, hey, would you like to be on my show? Because we just launched this uh, entertainment talk show three weeks ago. I normally do this professionally for a living as a television radio host. But uh, so many people, again, have told me for years to do something on social media. So we put this all together. We broadcast and simulcast worldwide at Gym Masters TV on Facebook. I hope you'll give the page a like, the Gym Masters TV Facebook page. YouTube, you can find these all archived on YouTube. Maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. You can also find me on Instagram as well at Gym Masters TV and on Twitter at Gym Masters TV. More comments coming in. I love this. I'm very, I'm like Pablo. I like to be interactive with the audience. It really, really um, is important for me. And yes, Pablo's music really does make you uh, feel good and heal. Absolutely. Uh, from Barcelona, Spain, Izzy, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. My first time tuning in. We'll watch again. Cindy, you are very, very welcome. It is a blessing to have you here. I appreciate your being with us here on the Gym Master Show. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, every single night. Regina says, saw you at Pablo's last show in Hartford. That's right. We're supposed to be at the show this past weekend. That's right. There was supposed to be another show, and I probably would have been there emceeing the show for Pablo as well. Yeah, that's right. And um, we had a wonderful time, Regina, didn't we? That he, his show in Hartford was amazing, and he got off the stage and he was, uh, was at the Bushnell, and he was working that audience and playing to the audience, and everybody was on their feet and cheering. Again, that's uh, that's what he's that's what he's about. And he's just a class act, and I really, really appreciate him being here with me, taking time. He's with his family in Florida. He's working on songs. And he shared this wonderful evening and a nice libation with us as well. I want to remind you, um, again, you can find his music on the internet as well and uh, CDs and DD, DVDs available. Um, thanking my very special guest, Pavlo. Again, he is absolutely one of the nicest guys that you can meet. And again, he's also somebody who really uh, works the show, meaning that he really gets people interactive. And I think that is really, really important. This particular show was definitely a special one. I appreciate that, Regina. I also want to let everybody know we have some amazing guests joining me here on the Gym Masters show coming up uh, throughout the, the rest of the week and into next week as well. And I want to share with you some of the amazing people that are coming up. We've had um, really cool people that are dear friends of mine that I've been calling upon. And now what's happening is I have people calling me wanting to be on the show, which is amazing. They found out that I'm doing the show and they're like, hey, I want to get on with you, Jim, because maybe I've worked with them before or it's just cool. Tomorrow night, you're going to laugh. We have award-winning comedian, Bill Hildebrandt. He is incredible. If you don't know his work, he's originally from Michigan. He, uh, he performs in Vegas. He sells out everywhere he goes. He's extraordinarily funny. And he's going to be with us tomorrow night. If you think you're having a bad day, you need a lift, you want some laughs, you've got to join us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live here on the Gym Masters Show. Again, streaming, simulcasting on Facebook at Gym Masters TV on Facebook and also on YouTube at Gym Masters TV and Instagram at Gym Masters TV. He's with us tomorrow night. Then another dear friend who I've interviewed many, many times. We stay in touch all the time. We're always texting each other, calling each other, and we've stayed dear friends. And uh, we just worked on a special uh, not that long ago, which was shot in Maine, which was Celtic Heart with Tim Janis. And when I was on stage at Carnegie Hall, I'm seeing she was there performing as well with a whole cast of fabulous people with the Christmas concerts. This is the incomparable Mairead Nesbitt. You may know her from um, Celtic Woman, as well as Rocktopia, the Broadway play. She was in that. And also um, she has her own violin line. She is 
extraordinary. She's a dear friend, a sweetheart, and she's joining us on Thursday night right here on the Gym Masters Show Live. So tell your friends, have watch parties, share the links. The more people that watch, the more shows we'll have for you, the more light and levity and love and uh, good times. On Monday, I'm so excited, extraordinary uh, film actor, producer, television actor, the incomparable Tony Lobianco is going to be here with a very, very special Memorial Day episode, a very special Memorial Day episode of our show. And it's going to be something breathtaking. He's going to be sharing with us <clears throat> a very important video that he was involved in, a tribute video that has been seen by over 60 million people worldwide. This is legendary television and film actor, movie star, Tony Lobianco, joining us on Monday. On Tuesday of next week, extraordinary actress, Liz Kiefer joining us. And Liz, for 27 years, acted on the very popular television soap opera on CBS, Guiding Light. That's right. You may recognize her from Guiding Light. I interviewed her on the radio a few weeks ago, and uh, she found out that I was doing the Gym Masters uh, Entertainment TV talk show here, and she said, I want to be on it. Right away, she said, I want to be on it. So I really appreciate that. And uh, I also want to share with you something else here. I want to give you a little more uh, of the music of uh, Pavlo. This was really, again, you saw this a little bit earlier if you've been with this show from the beginning, but it's worth taking a look at again. And if you missed it earlier, here you go. Enjoy, and then I'll be back to wrap things up and some special announcements here on the Gym Master Show. Hope you're enjoying.
Absolutely amazing, right? Good stuff. That is Pavlo, our very special guest tonight here on the Gym Masters show. And I tell you, originally this show, these shows were only supposed to be an hour long, but they've been growing and growing and growing. Uh, when we started it three weeks ago, it was about an hour. But these things, exactly like Ken says here from Wappingers Falls, New York, these two-hour shows are the new norm. I think so. Yes, but aid is going to be here. Bravo. We thank you very much. But eight is amazing. Yes, they all are. All my friends, all these great guests we have are absolutely fantastic. They're the best of the best, good-hearted people. You are very welcome, Izzy. Thank you very much, Barcelona, Spain. We really appreciate that. And a wonderful show again, uh, Karen Ayani. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, yes, the two-hour shows are the norm I, generally, they're an hour. We're going to see if we can try to keep one of them for an hour, but I don't know. We have so much fun, you know, and uh, we need some light and levity. We need some happiness. And as I say, everybody watching, you're all a star to me. I always uh, like to show this uh, during the course of the show. Each and every one of you are a star in my book. I also want to, uh, as I like to say during the course of these broadcasts, remind you, as Pavlo was saying as well, to relax, to try to breathe count your blessings, think about the joys and pleasures you do have in your life, your loved ones, maybe hopefully your health, the family, the relatives. Uh, life is short. Life is, uh, tomorrow is uh, a rumor. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. So I like to show this uh, towards the end of each broadcast, sending you love, sending you light, thanking you for all of the love and support, all the great comments, uh, sharing the links, all the great things you guys are doing. There's so many people that want this show to continue to grow. And I'm so deeply humbled by the response. I love what I do, just like Pavlo and all these great guests. I truly love what I do. I love communicating with people. I love inspiring people and lifting people up uh, from the bottom of my heart. That is what I do. That's the essence of who I am and all my work and all these years in television and radio and even off the air. It's just an, the essence of who I am. Uh, the guy you see, just like Pablo, the guy you see on stage is the guy you're going to see in the supermarket and it's going to be the same. Uh, I'm the same way. So I tell you wherever you're watching around the world to relax, to breathe. We will get through all this together. The sun will come up tomorrow. The birds will chirp. The ocean tides will come in. Relax, breathe and enjoy life and the people that you care about around you, because again, life is very, very short. Our friends here, our cast of characters are getting ready to wrap up as well. Jimmy the Clown says good night to you as well. <laughs> you got to have fun, right? Don't take life too seriously. We know that for sure, as does Pablo Silver. The dog that came from a TV shoot I was on in Europe says good night to you as well. You know, again, these... these props. Don't tell them they're props. They, they were just supposed to be here for like a one night nostalgic night that we did, but everybody wants them to stay on the show. So I'm here to please you. And of course, our George Burns, which Pablo loved as well, brought him back some great memories. George Burns with a cigar and his glasses. He wishes you a good night as well. And let's check in with Jeannie and the authentic replica hand-painted I Dream of Jeannie bottle. This was given to me uh by a dear friend for a birthday several years ago. Jeannie, how did you like the Pavlo uh, interview and concert? She said it was fantastic, Master. <laughs> you mean Jim Masters, right? You have a good night. Hopefully the hair salons will be open soon so you can get your hair done. <laughs> you, good, you have a good night. We love you too, Jeannie. <laughs> All the cast of characters here. You got to have fun. You got to make it light. And beautiful for people. We are going to wrap up the show. We've got a few more comments coming in here. We'll get those, slide those in. Yes, Izzy, yes, relax. It's very important. And you are very, very welcome. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us here on the show, everybody. It's, uh, it's a real blessing having you here. I thank you. Again, we are here um, every single, every single night. Did I sign up for this? Every single night, 7 p.m. Eastern with the Gym Masters Show, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here live, uh, simulcasting on Facebook and on uh, YouTube as well. So for everybody here, the entire team at Gym Masters, 
uh, show. Thank you very much for all of your love, all of your support. We really appreciate it. You guys are a true, true blessing. And um, I hope you'll join us tomorrow night. We're going to have a lot of fun with uh, uh, with our very special guest, uh, Bill Hildebrandt. He's going to make us laugh. To, again, a legendary um, legendary comedian. That, and we can use some laughter, right? We can all use some laughter. All right, guys. I toast to you and you and you and you and you. You have a great night. We still have a lot of people watching. I, I hate to wrap things up. I'm not a good goodbye person, but thanks for your support. Thanks for your love. Continue tuning in. Spread the word about the show. It's growing by leaps and, bound, leaps and bounds. So many people are responding so beautifully to it. And I cherish all of you. And I really, really appreciate that. So I salute you wherever you're watching around the world. I am your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time, right here on the Gym Masters Show. For all of us, you have a good night. Take care. Thanks for watching.